This is Reverend Gary Emus. I'm on the road again. I'm still in St. Louis, Missouri. Just wanted to let you know one thing. God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he should believe it and him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm the watchman on the tower. I've been doing that for many, many years. Shalom, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's right now going on about 11 o'clock at night. I'm very serious about what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to get to, for you to understand. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to reach out to you, to let you understand that Jesus Christ loves you. And he's sending out his messengers. He's sending out the watchman on the tower. He's sending us out for us to be a friend to you a companion to you. Anything that we can do to help, we want to do that. This is part three of my message. Salvation is like under base, a baseball. The Lady E.B. Hill once said that salvation is like a, under baseball. If you go to first base after you get your first hit, that means you're saved. That's your salvation. That's when you have everything going for you. All right? But then you get out of the game. He says you're out. He says then if you go to second base, that's when you want to learn a lot. That's when you want to be taught. That's when everything needs to come together in your life. But if you get off the base and go to the bleachers, you're out. Now you're rounding second. You're already saved. Now you're sanctified. Now you want to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Now you want to go into this second base. You want to learn everything about being spirit-filled. You want to know everything about him in a spirit-filled life. You want to know everything anywhere, anyhow. You want to get into his word. He says, if your word abide in me, my word abide in you, ask anything, it will be done unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, my brothers and sisters. Remember we talked about, in the first part, we talked about the familiar spirit who knows you and has an idea about you. He knows how to simulate himself to you. Then on second page, you have the voice of reason. He's the one that's in your head, always telling you what to do. Now you've got a man. A demon called the backslider. He's a he's at shortstop. He's between Delilah and Jezebel and the voice of reasoning. His job is to trip you up any way that he can. His job is to make sure that you walk out of the will of God. His job is to make sure that you learn everything that you can at second base. You go to school, you go to seminary, you start preaching, you get into the word, you start going into the mission field, and then one day you go, as you see a pretty girl or a pretty face, or you're at a motel and you turn on the TV set and there's pornography. Or you get on your, and you, and you look up something on your computer and it's X-rated. The backslider knows he's got you. But I want to quote you about three scriptures. Then I'm going to go into prayer, okay? I'm going to quote Proverbs 14 and 14. In Proverbs 14 and 14, it says this. You want to open up your Bibles, you can. It says that the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Proverbs 14 and 14. And then we're going to go to uh, Hosea 11 and 7 says, And my people are bent to backsliding from me, though they call them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. Then from there we're going to go to 14, and we're going to go to 14 and 4 of Hosea, and it says this, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for my anger is turned away from them. Wow. That means God's a the backslider's backslider. God, the Bible says he pirouettes around you. It takes a lot for you to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. 
the backslider is 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 trying to do whatever he basically can to get you to walk out of the will of God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we are in some perilous times right now, more than we've ever have been. You're saying, who will declare my name? Who will declare my name in the midst of a nation? Who will shout my name and, and, and bring out the shield of faith and the sword of my word and declare my name to a dying world? Who will declare me just far, but walk in greater? For the sands of time are running out, and my name will be declared in this final hour. That's what you want from us, Lord. You want us to reach out to those lost. You want us to bring them to a point. You want us to bring back those that have backslidden. Don't open their Bibles anymore. Don't even go to church. Don't listen to Christian music. They're set at bent on their own ways, the Bible says. So, Father, I ask that you take down this fleshly man and rise up in him the spirit of the living God and let every ear be attentive to the word that is coming from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So the backslider is a backsliding uh, a demon. And his job is to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to trip you up, to change you, to make you something that you're not. Folks, why do we go and do the things that we do? Paul says, I do the things I do, not because I want to do them, but I do them anyway. I wonder what he was talking about. What was, what was the main purpose of everything, even though he says, I, I count myself all dung. He knew who he was in Christ. My question to you is, as you begin to make that turn and you start to head towards third base in your most difficult point of time that you'll ever face, what are you doing to compensate? When he comes in like a flood, do you set up a standard against him? When he when he reminds you of your past, do you remind him of his future? What do you do? Are you on your knees praying for hours on hours? The Bible says with one praying, God sends a thousand angels to fly. Two praying, he sends 10,000 angels to fly. Three praying, he sends 100,000 and so on and so on and so on and so on. Because he owns and controls two times more than Satan does. My question to you today is this. Excuse me. How do you get out of your backslidden condition? Do you have to have somebody knock you on the head like me? Do you have to have someone wrestle with you for six hours in your bed and not let you sleep until you hear him say enough is enough. When you get a message on email and that message says something that's not of God, click it off. Don't even open it up. Consider it a spam, a phishing, whatever you want to call it. Don't open it up. If you open it up, then you are in the midst of a backslider. What does a backslider do? I've already explained to you what a backslider does. That's what his job is to do. It's to do everything that he can to bring you down. Everything he does is not for God's glory. Everything he does is not even going to make a difference in your life. I wonder how many people really, really can say if they died tonight, they would go to heaven. Because, see, if you can't say that in a brief second, you need to check yourself at the door. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Narrow is the road if you find it. I had a dream one time about that people were on this long, long road 
that as they began to go on this long, long road, Jesus Christ himself stepped in the way. With tears coming down his cheeks, he says, come in my path. My yoke is light. Your burdens are heavy, but my yoke is light. Come on my path. Come to me, all ye that are heavy laden, I will give you rest, he says. Don't try to jump over the sheep's gate to try to find your way into heaven illegally. I am the sheep. I'm the shepherd. My people know my voice and they hearken to it. And then all of a sudden the people go, no. We're hearing all that noise and it's, it means people are happy and they're content. And Jesus said, you're going down the wrong path. Pride goes before destruction. Haughty spirit before the fall. Yet, they do it anyway. They're on the road to destruction, like the song says. They don't realize that the end of that past is sulfur and brimstone. Could I have been in that path? Could I would it could I have seen myself going in that direction? I always thought I was a good Christian. I always thought I was a good man of God. I always thought I was doing things for the kingdom of was I doing it for the kingdom of God or was I doing it for Gary? Was I doing it for this flesh? Was the flesh rising up in me? I heard a lady the other day, I was telling her how she mocked my God. I can tell at one time somebody in her family knew Jesus. But she said to me, and I had a tear after that, and she says, I said, I only believe in one, and his name is Jesus Christ. He died for us on the cross. And she says, I don't believe in Jesus. I have other gods. And I remember the movie with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore, Ghost how they thought the same way until all of a sudden the demons came and took them. A light shone bright to those that knew him. What are you going to face in your life, my sisters and brothers in Christ? Has the backslider got you tied up, locked up, are you watching that box? Are you putting in videos? Are you playing video games that are damning to your, not only to your home, to your family, to your lifestyle, to your work, to your church? Are you denying the purpose of why God saved you from grace? I would rather do work for Jesus Christ than sit in the synagogue of Satan. Folks, I'm doing this very, very calm and collected tonight. But I want to get across the message because the next message I'm going to give you is the message of the hour. The message of the matriarch and the message of this Jezebel spirit which is more prevalent in the churches today than it ever, ever has been. So this is Reverend Gary Emus, Doctor of Divinity, the watchman on the tower looking out for you, saying shalom, my brothers and sisters. Buy my book, Soteria to Sozo, Cradle to the Grave. It's the best nuggets you'll ever get in your life. I love you. Shalom. Until next time. Part 4.